Cristiano Ronaldo's two-goal second debut at Manchester United might be one of the greatest comebacks in Premier League history. The two goals allowed him the chance to stage his trademark celebration in the 4-1 win over Newcastle United. During all the excitement, there was something happening inside and outside Old Trafford. We'll tell you all about that in just a bit. Eduardo Camavinga had a lot of options to choose from, but decided to make a dream move to Real Madrid. The French teenager has made an unforgettable start to life in the Spanish capital, and there's definitely more to come from him. Liverpool went through Leeds United like a freight train, but the only blemish in the comfortable win for Jurgen Klopp's side was the horrible injury suffered by young midfielder Harvey Elliott. Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund share quite a rivalry, and things have taken a turn for the worse after the sporting directors of both clubs were caught in a war of words over something that shouldn't have been taken out of context. We've got all this and more in today's episode, so why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our channel and make sure that you're always up to date on the major stories that this amazing game has to offer. And that brings us to the sponsor of this video. Unless you want to miss out on your favorite team's games, you're going to need a VPN that can get you past all those annoying streaming geo-restrictions. Can't access your favorite league? A VPN will allow you to stream content like football games or even Netflix shows that are not available in your country. Our favorite VPN provider is Private Internet Access. It changes your IP address and reroutes your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel, hiding your online activity from your internet service provider and government sensors. It's our favorite tool to stream football matches for free. It works with all major streaming services, so you have unrestricted access to all your favorite content anywhere in the world and is available for all operating systems. Signing up is risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Sign up right now to get 83% off, plus two free extra months. Go to www.privateinternetaccess.com slash goalside to get it now, or simply press the link in the description. The Bianconeri have made a horrible start to the 2021-22 campaign in the Serie A and are waiting for their first win of the season following a 2-1 defeat at the hands of Napoli. Max Allegri's men have also lost to Empoli and Atalanta this season, and it appears that the same defence that guided Italy to Euro 2020 triumph is now struggling. The Turin giants are now looking to bring in a new left-back and have identified Ferlon Mendy as the perfect replacement for Alexandro. Mendy is currently under contract with Real Madrid, and it's unlikely that Los Blancos would sanction his departure. Juventus, however, are keeping their options open and are also looking to make their move for German international Robin Gusens, who came close to leaving Atalanta this summer. The experienced fullback is also attracting interest from the likes of Atletico Madrid and Borussia Dortmund. However, it is the Spaniards who are reported to have the upper hand in negotiations, with the 25-year-old preferring a move to Spain over a stay in Italy. Juventus are currently in 16th place in the league standings and they're in heaps of trouble. They host AC Milan on September 19th in a crucial game where nothing less than victory will make life easier for Allegri, who has his work cut out for him. Liverpool made quick work of Leeds United in their Premier League encounter on Sunday. The Reds were in top form out there and offered Marcelo Bielsa's men no respite whatsoever. Every player did their part in the 3-0 win, and if you ask us, Liverpool have genuine title credentials. They might not have made a lot of headlines this summer, but Klopp's men are going to be right up there when it comes to wresting the league title out of Manchester City's grip. Unfortunately, the win came at a cost. Harvey Elliott was stretched from the field after dislocating his ankle following a tackle from Pascal Streich, who was duly given his marching orders for what has to be considered a bad tackle. The moment the red starlet went to the ground, players from both sides waved towards the medical staff to come onto the field. Speaking to the media following the win, Klopp confirmed that the youngster had dislocated his ankle. It is a bad injury, ankle, Klopp said. I heard it was dislocated and we could put it back. He's now in the hospital, so we have to wait. He played again, an incredible game. He's an incredible player and now he's out. We have to be there and we will be there. We will play football without him, but we will wait for him as well because he is a top, top player. Elliot had made a great start to life as a Liverpool player and before the injury had established himself as an important member of the first team. The injury couldn't have come at a worse time for him, but hopefully he's able to come back from this stronger than ever. 
we all know that Eduardo Camavinga is going to have a great career for club and country. The France international recently completed a dream switch to Real Madrid, and at the age of 18, 40 million euros is a great bargain for someone who has so much potential. The teenage forward was handed his debut in Real Madrid's 5-2 win over Celta Vigo, and needed only six minutes to open his account. The game was itself a great exhibition of Madrid's supremacy, with Karim Benzema completing a hat-trick at the Santiago Bernabeu. Their opponents finished in the first half with a 2-1 lead. However, things were different after the break, with Benzema scoring his second goal of the game in the 46th minute, and then with Vinicius Jr. finding the net 10 minutes later. In the 66th minute, Camavinga replaced Ed Nazar, and six minutes later, he was on hand to tap home from close range into an empty net. The youngster's debut goal is a positive sign for both the player and the club. Camavinga has only recently arrived in Madrid, but is expected to hit the ground running this season. The former René midfielder rejected approaches from PSG and Manchester United in order to sign for Madrid, and is understandably eager to prove his worth here. It's clear that Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund don't see eye to eye on most matters, with the latter always a little insecure over Munich's schemes to sign its best players. So, it wasn't much of a surprise to see Bayern sporting director Hasan Salihamidzic and his opposite number Michael Zorc criticize one another. Salihamidzic was the one who started this round of bickering after the former midfielder questioned Dortmund's tactics following Marco Reus's withdrawal from international duty with Germany. Salihamidzic said that he did not understand why Reus would withdraw from the World Cup qualification game against Iceland due to a knee injury and was still fit enough to play the 90 minutes of his team's 4-3 win over Bayer Leverkusen. The Bayern Supremo says that his team's players would never pull out of international duty even if they were carrying an injury. However, those are rich words coming from Sally Hamidzic, since Thomas Müller also missed all three of his country's games during the international break, but was fit enough to play 75 minutes of the 4-1 win over RB Leipzig. That's not my thing, but I find it surprising when you drive away from the national team and then play again a few days later," said Salihamidzic. Zorik was having none of it and had a snappy response to Salihamidzic's comments. Salihamidzic should keep his mouth shut and comment on the issues of Bayern Munich. Who does he actually think he is? Is this the end of it? Knowing Salihamidzic, we're sure an apt response is incoming. Less than five months ago, Manchester United fans were storming through the gates of Old Trafford and caused their game against Liverpool to be abandoned. The club's fans have never liked how the Glazers have been managing the club. However, it appears that the American owners have spent the entire summer trying to please the disgruntled fan base. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been given a lot of help this summer. The arrivals of Jadon Sancho and Rafael Varane give fresh optimism for a better tomorrow. But most importantly, the return of prodigal son Cristiano Ronaldo means that the Red Devils now have pretty much everything they need in order to return to their glory days. Ahead of the game, however, there were reports of a few chants against the club's owners. We could notice chants such as, get out of our club, reverberating around the Stretford end in unison. However, those chants weren't actually aimed at the Glazers, who were in attendance, something that's become a bit of a rarity these days. As it turns out, the chants were being aimed by the travelling Newcastle United supporters at their own owner, Mike Ashley. The club recently published a 750-word statement in order to justify a rather timid summer transfer win where only one signing was made and the wage bill was slashed. The retail tycoon has been like this for a number of years, and Steve Bruce is not the first manager to have frustrations at the club. Rafael Benitez did wonders for them on a limited budget, but eventually decided to walk away. Mike Ashley likes his managers to be subservient and not throw their toys out of the pram even if the demands are justified. Bruce had been calling for a midfielder all summer long, but the club's ownership is apparently more concerned about other things. Newcastle United's search for a first win continues, and it'll end at some point. However, the fans' search for a new owner, or a saviour in this case, is likely to continue for years. Ashley knows the club's worth, and is only going to sell if anyone is crazy enough to meet his demands, even if it means a sad return to the championship.